Hello students, welcome to the EPG Patshala course on Crime Prevention. I am Dr. Vijaya Somasundaram, Assistant Professor from Rajalakshmi Engineering College, Chennai. And I will be uh, discussing with you today the module number 19 on Government and Non-Government Intervention Programs. In this module, we will be looking at Government-based Crime Prevention Interventions, Non-Governmental Crime Prevention Interventions and the CCO Framework of Crime Prevention. Now, risk of crime is due to wide variety of social and environmental factors and to affect strategies to prevent crime, the concerted efforts of several actors may be necessary such as individuals, communities, businesses, governments and non-governmental organizations. National and local crime prevention strategies are drawn from the norms and standards prescribed by the United Nations. These principles are based on accumulated research and knowledge about the causes of crime and the effective ways to prevent them. The costs of the criminal justice system, including policing, the courts and the correctional systems are exceedingly high. The social and economic impacts of crime on victims and their families, on individual offenders and their families, as well as society as a whole are enormous, affecting physical and mental health, education and work. The growth of interest in crime prevention can be seen in the expanding network of cities and countries working with the European Forum on Urban Security and the International Center for the Prevention of Crime, both of which were established in the early 1990s to, prevent, to promote crime prevention and community safety. Work to reduce violence against women and promote women's safety in urban settings has also been expanding over the past 12 years, especially with projects initiated by non-governmental organizations such as Women in Cities International based in Montreal, Red Mujir Y Habitat in Latin America and Jagori in Delhi, as well as the UN Habitat, the World Bank and the World Health Organization. In 2010, UN Women launched a global program on safe cities for women and girls, modeled in part on the work of those organizations. In a series of regional studies, UNODC has demonstrated that safe cities and communities are essential for the social and economic growth of a country. A number of other international organizations, including the World Bank and the WHO, now recognize that safety and violence reduction are essential prerequisites for development and make cities inclusive, safe, resilient and sustainable in one of the new sustainable development goals adopted by the United Nations General Assembly in October 2015. Now we look at the principles of intervention. The conjunction of criminal opportunity or the CCO framework provides the foundation on which intervention programs whether government or non-government may be based. The CCO framework supplies a map of 11 immediate causal pathways which come together to make criminal events happen and 11 counterpart principles of intervention which seek to block, deflect those or weaken those causes. The 11 offender or situation characteristics or causal pathways and the corresponding intervention principles are the criminality or predisposition to offend intervention lacking social and or intellectual skills to avoid crime supplying skills to avoid crime training offenders in social skills training in practical or work skills contact with preventers mentors minders or and models readiness to offend intervention reducing readiness to offend uh, control of disinhibitors example alcohol control of stressors or motivators then tackling debt in unemployment, housing problems, etc., resolving prior conflicts, satisfaction of psychological and social needs legitimately, esteem, inclusion, resources for committing crime, crime intervention, restricting resources, control of, screening for, design of weapons, tools, information on targets, attractiveness and vulnerability, know-how or MOs of control of uh, criminal organizations, recruitment, growth efficiency, decision to commit uh, crime intervention, deterrence, increase perceived 
risk of getting caught, increase perceived costs of getting caught, formal are arrests and punishment, informal are shame, personal guilt, discouragement, increased perceived effort, reduced perceived reward, offender presence in the situation, intervention, excluding offenders from crime situation, segregating conflicting groups, closing roads and paths, attracting offenders elsewhere, exclusion of specific offenders, enhancing traceability, target property intervention reducing, uh, target vulnerability or attraction, target hardening, concealment, target removal, value reduction, reducing provocativeness, property identification, target person intervention is reducing target vulnerability or attraction, target absence is avoidance and reducing provocation, target enclosure is perimeter or access security, adding enclosure and access, uh, control of perimeter, then control of access, screening at the entrance or exit, then wider environment interventions are environmental design and management, defensive space principles, aiding surveillance, intelligently planned lighting, setting or communicating rules, conflict reduction such as sound insulation, crime preventers, intervention boost preventers, presence, competence, motivation and re or responsibility, extra surveillance of enclosed and wider environments, aids for preventers, alarms, CCTV, cultivating or protecting witnesses and informants, informal social control, formal control, self-protection and avoidance, crime promoters would be intervention, dis discouraging or deterring the promoters, naming and shaming, civil or criminal liability, tackling a uh, criminal subculture, then market for reduction for stolen goods, procedural controls. The governmental, government intervention programs uh, our government intervention programs for crime prevention are designed under the umbrella of a national crime prevention policy in most countries. The policy provides for setting up committees at the national, state and district levels that facilitate the working of such programs. Government programs in most countries are designed for all levels of institutional settings such as schools, families, communities, places, labor markets and the criminal justice system. The types of government interventions under which we have situational crime prevention programs such as target hardening programs, such programs aim at strengthening the security of an individual premises or a group of premises in close proximity with a view to reducing or minimizing the risk of attack or crime, for example increased lighting, securing with locks, screens and shields, automated train ticketing systems to reduce the fare evasion, bulletproof windows, vests, electric fencing, burglar alarms are some mechanisms used in target hardening programs. Programs deflecting offenders, such programs seek to physically segregate or exclude offender or offender groups. Examples include street closures, separate public facilities for women and rescheduling the conveyance routes at the time of public functions. Surveillance programs. These programs involve the use of CCTVs, security personnel, guards to survey, carry out surveillance, monitoring phone lines, intruder detection systems that deter crime. Target removal programs involve removing or shifting vulnerable target from risky situations. We then look at developmental crime prevention programs. Developmental crime prevention programs seek to bring social and or economic changes to individuals, communities and places so as to mitigate the forces that create a hospitable environment for crime to occur. Programs such as the Weed and Seed in the USA, Gang Prevention and Intervention School-Based Gang Prevention Curriculum, Creation of Employment Opportunities, Job Creations and Skill Development Programs are aimed at improving the socio-economic conditions and thereby act as instruments of crime prevention in the long run. Then we come to programs delivered by police, courts and corrections. The criminal justice system and the police prevent crime through tertiary prevention programs. 
tertiary crime prevention deals with actual offenders and involves intervention in their lives in such a fashion that they will not commit further offenses. Community policing, problem oriented policing, proactive arrest, reactive arrest are examples of such programs. The experience of a community oriented policing model in Chicago, United States demonstrates how one city implemented a model that appears to be effective both in terms of better community relations and reduced crime problems. This was the Chicago Alternative Policing Strategy initiated in Chicago in 1993. In five city districts with three objectives, the reorganization of decision-making powers and police functions, the resolution of local problems using neighborhood crime-related data, and active community participation and increased coordination among local actors. The 25 police districts are divided among 279 patrol teams, each consisting of 10 officers and responsible for an average of 4,100 households. Some officers are assigned to a rapid intervention team to respond to emergency calls, others patrol to resolve local problems in cooperation with citizens, patrol units hold monthly meetings with representatives from community organizations and residents in order to identify the most important crime issue in a local neighborhood. The implementation has been carefully evaluated. The results indicate an increase in, an increase in citizen trust of the police and a decrease in crime rates. Although police reform is not the only factor that might explain the decreased crime rate, the results show that crime decreased to a degree, greater degree in the sectors that implemented the model than in the control zones. Community-oriented policing systems in Colombia, Japan and the Philippines all provide good examples of locally accessible police systems with small police stations located in neighborhoods and working closely with the community. They are designed to be accessible to the public and to respond to the concerns of local citizens, residents and users. In the case of Bogota and in the Philippines, there was no tradition of community-oriented policing. In Colombia, Bogota, Chia system, a, similar, a system similar to that in Japan, placing small police stations in local parks and neighborhoods across the city is an example. In Japan, the Koban, Koban police box system, a community-based policing system by which small police stations are placed in villages and municipalities throughout the country so that they can respond to local problems. In the Philippines, the community-oriented policing strategy combines full-service policing with problem-solving and community partnerships at the local barangay level. Women's police stations are now widely used in Latin America, especially in Brazil, Ecuador, Nicaragua and Peru and outside Latin America in India, among other countries. They form part of the government strategies to prevent violence against crime, against women, sorry. Their aim is to increase the willingness of women to report violence they have experienced either in the family or public domain. They also help to raise awareness of the problem. They employ primarily women police and support staff who receive special training on violence against women, on legal responses and victim support and services available and work in partnership with the regular police and other local services. Since they were first established in 1985 in Brazil, there are now over 400 women police stations, 31 in Ecuador and 36 in Nicaragua. Government Community Partnerships The UN guidelines for prevention of crime requires governments to work in partnership with a range of sectors. Many countries have successful partnership programs for crime prevention. The Government Crime Prevention Plan of Western Australia. In Western Australia, the Office of Crime Prevention, the central coordination body, establishes community safety and crime prevention partnerships, which include the following sectors. The state police departments of the corrective services, health, education and training, housing and works, indigenous affairs and community development, national government agencies, aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities, businesses, young people, minority groups, 
which include ethnic groups and groups with disabilities, community volunteers, local schools, religious organizations and the local media. Government community partnerships in El Salvador. In El Salvador, a, community, a government community partnership was originally initiated by civil society. In 2003, a broad-based coalition society without violence was formed to work on the issue of armed violence. With the support of the United Nations Development Fund for Women, a comprehensive and detailed assessment was made of the extent of the problem, its sources and the kind of interventions needed. Together with the National Council of Public Security, the coalition lobbied the government to enact changes. The Ministry of Security responded by enacting leg legislation in 2006 to increase controls over firearm use in the terms of registration, ownership and the carrying of weapons in public and a tax on firearms whose revenue was to be used to improve health services. The ministry also decreed that municipalities could restrict the carrying of firearms in public and a number of communities reported decrease in violence. The coalition also successfully lobbied the government on establishing a national commission on community safety and social peace representing all five political parties, universities, the private sector and religious and other community groups. Their 2007 report contained 75 proposals for reducing armed violence. Now we come to non-governmental intervention programs. Non-governmental organizations are a major resource for national and local governments in developing prevention strategies. They often have specialist expertise in specific area such as police ethics, street children or rehabilitation services. They work closely with citizens on the ground as advocates for and providers of services such as women's shelters or legal advice service and they tend to be trusted by local communities because of their non-governmental status. Non-governmental organizations are often flexible and evolving and have the ability to launch new programs and pilot projects relatively quickly with government if resources without before the government if resources are available. They can also help governments in building the foundation for new policies. They usually have contacts with a variety of groups including key community members, victims and professionals, officials and media personnel working on specific issues. Non-governmental organizations and other civil society sectors can contribute at different stages of the development of strategies, for example, by sharing and creating knowledge and offering expert advice to government or the police in the definition and analysis of crime problems, especially in terms of vulnerable populations or specific issues by assisting in the design and implementation of projects, by helping to identify key stakeholders in a community or city or pl by playing a key role in coalition building and collaboration across communities which can lead to multi-agency cooperation by helping to develop, identify and disseminate good practices, by developing public education, organizing public forums to raise awareness or mobilizing local populations on specific issues such as gun laws or urban development through training and capacity building, for example, by developing or running training programs for local city staff or municipal police, citizen leadership, youth leadership and skills, training and development. Support for families, by helping to develop citizen audits, audits evaluation tools and programs, indicators of crime and the external evaluation of programs, by providing tools for police monitoring and evaluation, through training and collaboration in working with the media, disseminating success stories by promoting conflict resolution and mediation mechanisms and by acting as mediators in inter-community conflicts, a function which often cannot be performed by the government. A growing number of non-governmental organizations use innovative approaches to engage with partners on public safety and security issues. These include organizations such as Viva Rio, Sauda Paz and the Brazilian Forum for Public Security in Brazil, Jagori in India, CLEWN in Nigeria and Racing Voices in Uganda 
all of which work in partnership with the national, state and municipal governments, the universities, the police and the civil society. The Brazilian Forum for Public Security is a non-government organization that works with all levels of government. It was founded in 2006 initially to create a dialogue between the police and the civil society on safety and security issues. It hosts an annual conference which has become a meeting place for government policy makers, the police, practitioners and the non-governmental organizations to exchange views and discuss developments and good practices. It publishes annual statistical information on violence in Brazilian cities and organizes workshops to bring together municipalities to exchange ideas on prevention. CLEAN is a non-government organization based in Laos, Nigeria, which promotes public safety, security and accessible justice in partnership with government and civil society. It was established in 1998 and acts as a resource center and undertakes research and demonstration projects, organizes seminars and exchanges and publishes reports on relevant topics such as good, practice, good practices in youth crime prevention, policing and policing ethics and procedures, citizenship accountability and governance. Example of civil so society organizations that work with governments in the development of programs with youth at risk and or in the delivery of reintegration programs include the Central American Coalition for the Prevention of Youth Violence, CCPBJ and the National Institute for crime prevention and reintegration program and the Khulisa in South Africa. The Central American Coalition Against the Youth Violence brings together some 16 non-governmental organizations. They have produced a compendium of best practices for prevention and rehabilitation for youth involved in violence in the region. In El Salvador, a series of youth gang prevention projects have been developed in partnership with the civil society by the National Council for Public Security. These have included a rehabilitation farm school for people aged 12 to 25 years, a tattoo removal project and in-prison rehabilitation pro programs. NICRO is a national non-governmental organization in South Africa providing diversion for services for children in all provinces through five programs. The Youth Empowerment Scheme life skills program, a pre-trial community service program, a victim offender mediation program, family group ground conferencing and the journey life skills program for children at high risk. The organization has been very successful in reintegrating children, preventing offending and diverting cases from the justice system. It handles more than 10,000 cases each year. Kulisa works in correctional facilities and on diversion programs as well as with schools, victims and the community. It runs a series of reintegration initiatives such as the Young Offender Reintegration Program and the Make It Better Program. A review of the characteristics of effective projects concerned with youth gang violence in Central America and the United, Na United States highlights the importance of comprehensive and balanced approaches that are community based and include prevention, intervention, rehabilitation and law enforcement. Effective projects involve cooperation with schools, local organizations, faith groups and community networks. CyberCap is a Montreal based program in Canada. This program prov provides training in multimedia for young people at risk or ex-offenders and their families. Public-private partnerships have been formed with Microsoft, Ubisoft, Radio Canada, TSQ Television, Quebec Banks, the WHO Fund and provide, uh, who provide fund, uh, provide fund and computers, materials, internships, etc. Sui America Peace Parks are in Brazil. The insurance company Sui America works with the local youth at risk and their communities and in high risk areas to cover public spaces. The program encourages employees to become corporate volunteers. 
the Bogota Como Vamos Colombia. This program is a partnership between the publishing house El Tempio Corona Foundation and the Bogota Chamber of Commerce to organize a permanent discussion forum to promote improved and effective local public safety policies and public accountability. Enchuestas the victimization Peru is a major mining and where major mining and cement companies and the Andean Development Corporation fund the development of the nation and the urban victimization surveys and in Lima and it's it has conducted such surveys in Lima and 35 municipalities and 23 large cities it provides prevention and assistance to survivors of trafficking past India partnership between international organizations on migration and businesses Chamber of Commerce, Governments and Civil Society fund a program that provides rehabilitation, training, employment opportunities, microcredit and support for crime victims. Prevention of Violence Against Children and Youth, India Red Cross and the Canadian Red Cross funded a program that focused on reintegrating violence prevention with the rights of the girl child. It included child protection committees made up of teachers, police, parents and youth, school codes of conduct, uh, education to parents, youth peer education between the ages of 13 to 17 years, youth led to competition on violence pre by prevention, knowledge and solutions. Finally, we looked at this module where we looked at prevention of crime that requires a joint effort of a host of institutions including the individual, community, business, government and non-government organizations, national and local crime prevention strategies draw upon the standards set by the United Nations. While governments in most countries play an active role in crime prevention through specialized policies and laws, non-governmental organizations have shown an increasing interest in helping to make communities safe and relatively free from crime. They now recognize that safety and violent re violence reduction are essential prerequisites for development and making cities inclusive, safe, resilient and sustainable is one of the new sustainable development goals adopted by the United Nations. The conjunction of criminal opportunity or the CCO framework provides 11 causal pathways of crime prevention and the corresponding intervention that provides comprehensive maps of the mechanism of causation and intervention. Government intervention are comprehensive covering primary, secondary and tertiary types of programs. They may be situational crime prevention such as target hardening, surveillance programs, developmental programs or programs delivered by the police, court and corrections. Community policing systems, women's police stations are some effective government tertiary programs. Government community partnerships are advocated by the UN guidelines for prevention of crime and some community countries in the world have successfully implemented such partnership programs. Non-governmental organizations are more flexible and quicker in launching programs for crime prevention. They have better understanding with the community which enables them to gain specialist expertise in the area of crime prevention. Many NGOs are using innovative approaches to engage with society on safety and security issues. Thank you students, thank you for watching EPG Patshala course.